What's up, everybody? Skunk72 out here in Southern California. Coming at you with a quick review. No sequence. Call it a review of the RFSR helmet. It's the Showy RFSR. I believe it was the replacement for the Showy Quest helmet. So, the reason that I do the quotes is because using the word review makes it sound like I'm some kind of expert and I know what I'm talking about, which I don't. I don't want to give that impression. I'm not an expert. I'm just basically giving you my opinions on this new helmet that I bought. And looking around YouTube, I wasn't able to find reviews that were actually done by writers. I found more introduction videos from places that sell them. I found several unboxing videos and I found a couple where people were like comparing it to the Showy Quest. And I was looking for an honest review. Again, review in quotes. Review. I'm just some guy that likes to ride and want to help people when they're looking for quality products. So to start with, I'm going to tell you what helmet I came from before this. So I had the Bell Vortex. And although a lot of things about this Shoei are way better than that Bell Vortex, I don't want to badmouth it. Vortex was a great helmet for me to start with. Um, I was replacing a store brand helmet when I bought the Bell because my store brand helmet was just not aerodynamic at all and I had horribly bad buffeting. And I ended up choosing the Bell Vortex because I was able to get a Snell-approved helmet for under $200, which is what I was looking for. I bought it, used it for several years. Now my comparisons are mainly going to be to that helmet. So let me start off by saying how light this Shoei RFSR is. The Shoei is fiberglass, organic fibers and composites and things like that where my Bell Vortex was a uh, polycarbonate, so it was kind of heavy. Not a whole lot heavier, but it was a little heavier, and after a long day of riding, my neck knew that heavy helmet was on it. Let's move on to the face shield. Bell Vortex face shield did not seal very well so it, it didn't have the negative pressure that pulls the shield back against the seal and that what that would do is it would allow a whole lot of wind noise in through through the face shield the showy has the positive detents where when you put it all the way down the spring-loaded action actually pulls the face shield tightly up against the the seal cuts out a lot of wind noise. So going along with that, the Bell Vortex was very, very loud, where uh, there's a serious noticeable difference in the Shoei helmet not being loud. Yeah, it's very quiet. Yeah, and I personally have a Cena on my helmet, and the, uh, the speaker holes in the Shoei actually come with with plugs basically so if you're not going to be using it you just leave those plugs in the air holes and what it will do is it'll seal out a lot of even more road noise not that there's much that gets through it to begin with the other thing the interior liner the interior liner of this RFSR is very plush again I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm bad-mouthing my bell helmet, because I'm not. But you can tell the difference in the liner between these two helmets. The showy liner just feels so much more plush and soft. So 
let's get into ventilation. This Shoei RFSR is the first helmet I have ever had. That when I close my face shield, I can feel the air coming through those top vents up there. Going across the top of my head and being pulled out the back by the Venturi vents back there. My bell helmet, I honestly could not tell if the vents were even open. Open, closed made absolutely no difference whatsoever. Couldn't tell at all. Now another thing you also need to keep in mind is Shoei helmet, this RFSR Shoei, is specifically designed for the upright riding position. So basically for the cruisers or the naked bikes, if you ride anything where you're going to be in the tuck position, you don't want this helmet. You want to move up to the Shoei RF 1200, which is specifically the ventilation design for them. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the cons, which on this helmet, there are very few. One being the, the chin strap, the little covers that go on your chin strap. On my bell helmet, those covers had one extra little loop on them down near the bottom of it that would hold the chin strap in place which the Shoei helmet does not have that loop to hold it in place. So what will happen is when I tighten down, if I move around too much, the chin strap actually, or the, the little flap that covers the chin strap will actually move away and it will come untucked from underneath the chin strap. So I got bare chin strap rubbing on my neck. Hardly noticeable, but it is something to point out. The other thing, being a moto vlogger, the Shoei helmet has way less room inside around the chin bar area than my bell helmet had. So, it's leaving me in a little bit of a dilemma. And I, my microphone does not fit in here properly, so I'm actually working on a solution for that right now. I'm not sure what I'm going to come up with. I got a couple ideas uh, that I'm going to be toying around with. So, the mic I use is actually a Skype mic, and it's on a, it's a flexi mic. It's on like a flexible little boom. It's only about a four inch long boom, but when I was able to tuck it into my bell helmet, tuck it into my cheek pad, I was able to take my helmet off, put my helmet on with absolutely no problems whatsoever. When I tried to do that with my Shoei, I ended up cutting my forehead because the mic was too close and there wasn't enough room to pull my helmet off without the mic hitting me. Um, if you're not interested in moto vlogging, then that really isn't going to matter to you. Uh, Price-wise, as I said before, the the Bell Vortex, which actually I don't even think they make the Bell Vortex anymore. It's a qualifier now, which is basically the same helmet. I was able to get that for under $200. This showy helmet is $399. So it doubled the price, but there are benefits of paying that double price. The one other thing I was a little bit unhappy with is the cost of extra accessories for the showy. I paid, I believe, $60 for a tin advisor. If I wanted the mirrored finish on it, it would have been $100. And the uh, photochromic, the transi transitions visor that darkens up when you're in the light and then goes clear once it gets dark for the showy helmet is $170. For the Bell Vortex helmet, it was $120. So I was unable to get that. And then I believe the mirrored finish for the Bell helmets, I'm not, I'm not positive, but I want to say the mirrored finish was about 60 bucks. So you're going to pay a little more for Shoei. The only real problem I've had with this RFSR is a couple of times while handling my helmet, my visor actually my uh, face shield, I'm sorry, I keep saying visor. My face shield has actually detached on one side. It's never happened while riding, 
It's only happened while handling the helmet, but it just seems like it's popping out way too easy. The only other downside I found, and it's, uh, I, it might, it's leading me to believe that maybe the whole issue with it popping out and this other issue might be, I don't know if I, maybe I got a defective visor or maybe I didn't attach it properly is I a lot of times like to have my face shield open to feel the wind on my face when I'm riding. And so far I'm having trouble when I'm up at speed around 60 miles an hour or so, the face shield's not wanting to stay open. It closes on me where my bell helmet, if I put that thing all the way open, it stayed open even if I was at freeway speed. So the bottom line, would I recommend either of these helmets? The answer is actually yes to both. If you can't afford to drop the $400 for the showy helmet, I understand that. I don't make that much money myself and I get it and that's why I had that bell helmet to begin with. So for the $200 for that bell helmet, it is a great buy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't push you away from it things to keep in mind is heavy the large shell on it gives you a little bit of a bobblehead look but it was a good helmet uh, when it comes to a showy helmet I would recommend anything showy just pay attention to your riding style because like I said uh, the showy RFSR is for the upright riding position where the RF 1200 would be for the tuck position so I would recommend both. All right, y'all, I'm getting on the freeway now, and it's really not that much fun to watch, and I'm pretty much done with my quote review of the Shoei RFSR. If you enjoyed my video and it's helped you out at all, please give me a thumbs up, and also uh, hit that subscribe button for me. All right? I will catch y'all later. I'm out.